Morning Liberty. <laughs> How's this, Charlie? Is this familiar? I feel like I've heard it, maybe played it once or a hundred times. <laughs> you think uh, you think the, the guys would be okay with us using that real quick? They kind of have to be. I, I helped co-write the song. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that will be edited. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Charlie, you were in a band for quite some time, huh? I was. Yeah. Yeah. What? What about you? I was. Yeah. I wanted to talk about your travels, though. I mean, you you did quite a bit of quite a bit of touring. How many states have you been to? All of them, except one. Just one. Yeah, there's one state I haven't been to in my life. That's uh, too bad. It's it's a big one. It's a yeah. big state. Not many people are there though. No, not a lot. Like seven hundred thousand. Yeah, Alaska. Yeah, it's the only one I've. You're going to Alaska, aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but that's gonna be fun. It will be. Yeah. It's too bad you couldn't make it. I know. Too bad. Schedule plans. You know. You guys did uh, like some. I mean. You guys did some traveling for like Armed Forces Entertainment, right? We did. Yeah. Went to Greenland for 10 days. Okay. I uh, also played on a cruise ship. Nice. For Ship Rock down in the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, yeah. Toured for a long time. And so now you're just living off the spoils of your music <laughs> career. <laughs> exactly. Right? Man. It's just a, that's my day to day now. Just a retired <laughs> musician. The money just keeps rolling in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can look at uh, you can look at what was the name of the band, Charlie? It was called uh, Three Pill Morning. Okay, the the number three. Yes, and then Pill Morning. Yeah, you can find that on iTunes or any kind of any music sites. Yeah. I, I They're assume. still going. Still yeah. a good band. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty good. That's pretty good, man. Not I didn't even know you could sing. Not too shabby. I wasn't That's singing. nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it's not as cool then. Yeah. Huh? I slap it a bass, man. <laughs> <laughs> Big time? Big time. Okay. I slap it a bass, man. <laughs> well, I just wanted to start that off with a little bit more lighthearted information because the rest of this is going to suck. Yeah. I was I was going to start by saying I needed to get something off my chest and you threw me off guard. Yeah, I didn't tell you I was going to do that. No, huh? no. I kind of liked it. It's hard yeah. to talk about yourself, though. Yeah. Like... I don't know. I mean, I feel I did some cool things. You know, I made enough money to pay my bills at home, and I was never home. That's uh, that, <laughs> that's why we moved to Nashville, right? right? But both right. of us, uh, both from Illinois, both moved to Nashville, joining different bands, and uh, toured around for quite some time. Yeah, saw a lot of the world. Uh, very interesting. You know, what's the most interesting to me is the United States is full of all kinds of different cultures. You know, you go to different countries and they have like one culture for yeah. the country. Yeah. United States is like, I mean, you go to New Orleans, it's a completely different culture than Nashville. Yeah. And Chicago is a completely different culture from LA. And New York City. I mean, that's that's its own thing. It's insane. Sure. It's yeah. insane. All the different, uh, it's cool too. Like it's really cool to meet and see how different people uh, interact with each other based on what region of the United States you're in. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I I would say I mean it's a really we're a really big country. We have a lot more a lot higher population than most than most other countries. You know our our population is roughly it's almost like more comparable to Europe, like the population of the entire continent of itself. The EU, right. So if you were to look through all of the different countries throughout Europe and see all of their different cultures, that's really like how it is when you go to the states and you see each one of the states, you right. know. Only most people speak the same language in each right. one. So one of the things through my travel and I thought was really crazy was uh, everywhere I went in every country, um, that everyone spoke English, like uh, all of them. Yeah. You know, the only place I had an issue with it was in Hong Kong. And uh, I was just trying to order a sandwich, and I couldn't even get that through to the person. They had no idea. They had thought I was asking where the bathroom was in Spanish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> in Spanish. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that was really all I could do. Well, I think actually most kids and stuff, they, they're taught English from a young age because, you know, for America is still the greatest country. So if, <laughs> it's if, also a predominant language <laughs> throughout the, well, the rest of the world. <laughs> well, but yeah, but a lot of people have still have the American dream. Yeah. You know? They, they want to come here and they want to 
to do. I'm not saying for everybody, like, and I'm not saying other countries are bad. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that a lot of people are taught, especially like, you know, we had foreign students. Uh, what's that called? The foreign student program, the foreign exchange, foreign thing? exchange. Yeah. Yes. We had those and they said like English is like one of the first things they start learning in kindergarten. Yeah. In other countries. So hmm. we don't do that here. <laughs> like, I wish we would learn some other languages. You could be more of use. Yeah. Right? We have a hard enough time just learning English. It is. I mean, <laughs> it is the hardest. By far the most ridiculous language that there is. It is. It's so many words that, I mean, one word could mean three eight, different things. Eight. Crazy. Eight, eight different things. Yeah. yeah. There, there, and there. I mean, there's so many. I mean, I would not be able to learn it if I had grown up on a different language. Right. At all. But. It's what we have. Yeah. What are we going to do? Kind of a, a, a abrupt transition into what happened on Independence Day, July 4th. We celebrate, we celebrated privately, but, uh, which by the way, I got to blow it. You saw that video of Dude. my brother and I blowing up that, that uh, was, Tannerite. That was pretty cool. Man, 15 pounds of Tannerite. How and, high do you uh, think that barrel got? Oh man, that was, a. I mean... That was a couple hundred feet, a few hundred yeah. feet probably. It, it, it went really high. We took a, a, a 50 gallon, uh, like just imagine like an oil drum, something like that. It was probably was used for some uh, some chemicals of some kind. But Fertilizer or something. Yeah, we, uh, we took the uh, barrel and we propped it up with some milk crates and then we packed a bucket with 15 pounds of tannerite. And then uh, my brother shot it with his 308. And you got to have it. You got to shoot it. It's got to have a specific amount of velocity. What would you call that? Yeah, velocity going through it for it to explode. And uh, man, that thing launched up. It it was crazy. If you haven't, if you want to see the video, you can go to our Facebook page. Um, really, really. <laughs> I was worried it was going to go sideways or just <laughs> like ever. You know, the fact that it actually went straight up in the air right. was nothing short of a miracle, honestly. Um, and also. Your brother got it on the first shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were pretty far away. Right. Um, it was, I, I would, I mean, pretty bad estimation of how far away we were, but I don't know, I would say 100, 150 yards, something like that. Pretty, you know, I mean, not exactly Ameri American sniper kind of shot, but I mean, hitting that basically head-sized bucket <laughs> that was underneath the uh, the barrel and and getting it on one shot. I mean, right. that, that was great. You know, scientifically, it makes sense that the barrel went up in the air, though. Yeah. Right. Like, well, does it? Well, think about you know inertia and force, right? Yeah. So when the when the explosion happens, like the ground is there. Right? Yeah. So when it goes towards the ground, that's just going to stop it. Well, all that energy has to go somewhere. So yeah. up. Yeah. I like when it's up. I was just I was worried. You know, if it wasn't perfectly centered on there. I thought that maybe it would just immediately start spinning and just, you know, spin like crazy and kind of have a little bit more of an arch in one direction or another. Right. And um, come at you guys. But we did, we spent a pretty good amount of time trying to make sure it was centered over the, over the bucket to yeah. make sure it would go up and yeah, success. If it came at you, you probably could have caught it. Uh, but, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. It wouldn't have been that heavy. With one hand. One hand. <laughs> we had a firework explode. Uh, you know, you put those shells in the tube and, and, the, and you shoot them off. Well, we have one, instead of going up and exploding, that just exploded in the tube, um, like as soon as it popped out. And so just, I, I missed having like third degree burns on my face by a couple inches. Right. So, you know, not that long ago, we played that Back Up Terry video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I That's could have been, what it was. I wish I could have been there. I didn't get invited, though. <laughs> I was... You were busy. I was busy. Yeah. Had stuff going on. And, you know, I had, I had a really good 4th of July. Good. Had a good time. Good. Uh, well, you know who also declared independence on July 4th? Who? Justin Amash. He did. Pretty big, pretty big story, at least in our neighborhood it was. Um, Justin Amash, the Republican congressman from Michigan, officially uh, did an op-ed on, on the, for the Washington Post and came out saying that he was leaving the Republican Party. He denounced. Yes. He denounced his membership. So this was obviously met with a, um, 
you know, just a lot of level headedness and understanding. Right. And everyone was like, well, you know, it's cool. We should still work together. This and makes perfect sense. You, this makes sense. You're kind of right about some of the stuff you said. You obviously care a lot about liberty because you have a hundred percent record voting on the constitution. So and that's what we care about the so most. That's what we care about is the constitution. So we're going to go ahead and, um, you know, we'll let this go. See if we can get you back over to our side someday. So that's what happened, right? No, okay. <laughs> the complete opposite happened. Okay, which is okay. which is just crazy to me because it's like you, it's it, you would you would think that he like attempted to assassinate the president. Yeah, it's like that's what you would think happened. Almost the same thing. Right, seems like. Um, I'm trying to pull up Trump's tweet about it because it was just so ridiculous. Oh yeah, I didn't see that he tweeted about it. Yeah, of so course he did. Justin Amash had came out and uh, he actually said that he was in favor of impeachment for President Trump. So that's obviously got a lot of uh, MAGA folks pretty upset and also President Trump. But I came out uh, on our page, I wrote an article and it was called uh, Justin Amash is wrong on impeachment, but he's right about Republicans. And what I was trying to get across there was that I I don't agree with him that, that President Trump should be impeached. Um, I do trust Amash, and I do trust the fact that he read through the entire Mueller report, has gathered all the all of the information that he could before before coming out publicly with that. But what I would say is, under the whole obstruction of justice thing, uh, we haven't proven that there was, in fact, a crime that took place. So the the example that I used, or basically the idea that I have was, can you have obstruction of justice when there maybe wasn't even a crime? So a normal investigation, what happens is they see that a crime has been committed, and then they go to investigate that crime. So what this investi- investigation was, was to see if there was a crime. And I, I feel like the obstruction would be a little bit different. It's as, as if a police officer knocked on my door and said, hey, I'm going to come in here and look around and see if there's been a crime. And so when he comes in and I just kind of stand in his way or try to make it a little bit uh, hard for him, then I could get an obstruction charge. Well, th- the problem began with the fact that he was looking to see if there was a crime and not investigating a specific crime. So that's where I'm at on the impeachment thing. I don't agree with Amash on the impeachment. Yeah, the obstruction of justice is weird because is it really a crime? You know, should it be a crime? Even for, you know, American citizens, ask yourself, like, you know, if you're being investigated of, of something that you didn't do, right? Yeah. And like, how much does the fifth amendment apply? Like you don't have to say anything, right? Like you yeah. constitutionally, you don't have to say a word you plead when, you're being, the fifth. when you're being investigated. I found this tweet by the way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. And then this is like, I don't know. This is basically what we heard when, when we said that we support Justin Amash for leaving the GOP. Uh, we had a, a lot of people speak this exact same ret- rhetoric. Uh, Trump tweeted about Justin Amash leaving the GOP. Great news for the Republican Party as one of the dumbest and most disloyal men in Congress is quitting the party. No collusion, no obstruction. Knew he couldn't get the nomination to run again in the great state of Michigan. Already being challenged for his seat. A total loser. (laughs) (laughs) I just, God bless Oh, okay. So what did he start with? The dumbest the, and the dumbest and most disloyal he said men in Congress, but I think he meant man in Congress is quitting the party. Ugh. So and this is like all of can you can tell Trump supporters their rhetoric yeah. is exactly the same. Oh yeah. Exactly. Like comments on her page, what a loser. 
What a rhino. Good. Glad to see you gone. Now we can get somebody that supports the president in there. Because that's what we want in Congress, people yeah. that support a king. That's what you want. That's the number one job of Congress is to back the president on right. anything that they do. Why do when, we even have a Congress? When did this insane idea take place? I mean, when I, did this happen? Why don't we just get rid of Congress? Why yeah, do we need we might them? as well just have, if if, the if job, they don't support the president, then they just need to be gone. Yeah. If the job of Congress is to support the president, then why have a Congress? Right. There's really no reason. The people... These some of these MAGA supporters are ready for a king. I do. I honestly believe they would be okay if Trump served until he died. Actually, somebody said that Trump deserves two more years. Yeah. Um, and two more the, terms. No, two or more years. Two more years because the Mueller investigation took two years. Oh, and an so extra they, two years. I got you. So they impeded his yeah. first two years in office. So he, we don't need to have a presidential election until twenty twenty two. Now listen, I do think the Mueller investigation has been. 70 to 80 percent just a political witch hunt i i do agree with that i i think it's been very annoying i've been over this whole russia thing from the beginning yeah the media coverage Uh, jesus it's obviously they've they've sank their teeth into it and they've tried to do anything they can to make his presidency uh you know invalidate his presidency the whole time but this I got to ask you this, like, do Republicans, what is the Republican Party? What does it mean to be a Republican? I don't even know anymore. I don't either. Because uh, when I grew up, I thought it was like supporting the Constitution and supporting, you know, the ideas of the founding fathers and all all of these things, fiscal fiscal responsibility, all, all of these things. But I don't see that anymore. Right. I do not see that. From Republicans. I thought it was about lowering taxes and cutting spending. Yeah. Which well, which we've we've spent more under Trump so far than yeah. any other president. You know, we everybody complained about Obama doing it, and now we have a president, but hey, you know, he he's doing it, so it must be good for <laughs> for trade and, and the troops and everything like that. I guess so. So the the idea behind Trump's tweet, which we've seen through everyone, that this is good news for Republicans. This is good news for America that Justin Amash is will more than likely not be in Congress anymore. I I have to really I mean, really look at that. He could still run as an independent and win. Yeah. It's possible. I don't think he will. I think at this point the the Republicans would take out a trillion dollars in your name to beat Justin Amash. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean he still has a lot of supporters. He does. You know, if you look at the town hall that he did course they showed like one clip of one woman who was berating him but most people in that entire town hall supported him yeah so and he has he is it's still hard to beat an incumbent now it's easier to beat an incumbent when they switch parties yeah but it's still hard to beat an incumbent but i mean i kind of see him running more than likely uh, this is obviously just speculation but i mean you could see him on the libertarian ticket for president right i kind of see that as as oh, a possibility. I wonder if he en- enters the race as an independent because he could probably garner enough percentage points to be a part of the debates. Yeah, true. So you would have Democrat, independent, and Republican. He would be like a Ross Perot. Yeah. Now, I, I've seen that too where Republicans are really worried that this is going to take votes away from Trump and that this is just a... You know, just an inside job from the Democrats to make sure that Trump doesn't get reelected. But well, so like, okay, the mag the MAGA votes are going to stay, right? Like yeah. Trump's main base, the loud ones, they're all going to vote that way. But they're, the majority of Americans are still fed up with both sides. Like, yeah, they're fed up with Trump and his rhetoric and some of the things that he does, and they can't stand how socialist the Democrats are going. So there's still a giant pool of people. Right. And and if if it comes down between three candidates, let's say you've got Trump, Joe Biden and Justin Amash, you know, he could win. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> but does sound what, crazy. What would you need? He would need 30 something percent of the vote. That's, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's true. You know, and what did Ross Perot get? Like 18 percent or something like that, I think. So he got quite a quite a few votes for sure. And with with Amash the way he is, I mean, he's going to get pl- plenty of media coverage. The thing about it is, can he raise the money if he runs as an independent or I, maybe even if he runs as a libertarian, he could get enough percentage to get into the debates. Yeah. 
But that's going to be the key thing, getting into the baits. That that will definitely be the key issue is whether or not he can make it into those. I honestly see, I see him being as dangerous to the Democrats as he is to the Republicans. Absolutely. Though, because he's going, if the Democrats go with Joe Biden, you're going to see a bit of a protest vote from the socialists again. You're going to see kind of the same thing with what happened with Hillary. If you throw up a Justin Amash libertarian um person who has called for Trump to be impeached, it will be very easy for Democrats who are unhappy with Joe Biden being the candidate to go throw a protest vote at Justin Amash. Right. So I actually see him, whereas a lot of Trump supporters will say, well, this is just going to, you know, this is just going to help the Democrats. I actually see it more as it would help Trump more then it will help the Democrats because I I don't think Trump's base is going anywhere. I think it's going to hurt both. So yeah, it it will definitely because I think there were a lot of let's say you could call them, you know, more conservatives, more conservative Republicans that didn't like Trump that actually voted for Trump just to make sure Hillary didn't get elected. Yeah, and I think you would lose Trump would lose those votes, and the Democrats would lose the we're not ready for socialism. You know, especially if you get, let's say, I mean, Joe Biden may be more of a moderate, but, you know, Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders or all these people that are literally trying to go as socialist as we possibly can go right now, all the moderate Democrats are going to not be for that. They're going to be for someone who's a principled person, and maybe he's a little bit more conservative than they would like. But like he said, he called for the impeachment of Donald Trump, and he looks like he's lining himself up to garner both sides and the majority of Americans when you look out across all kinds of things you have really the loud people is a tiny minority on both sides the majority of people are like us like we want some sort of balance right we want we want to make sure our grandchildren uh, aren't going to be basically spent to death and be in so much debt um, that they can't handle it we want people to live healthy, normal lives, to be left alone, to, to have freedom and do what you see fit without that's the majority of people want those types of things when you go out and talk to communities. So he's got be awesome. Honestly, <laughs> I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. And of course we'll, we'll cover everything here every single day. I We're wanted to, to go over a couple posts here because I, I really think this deserves some time, which is, I try to choose my words carefully here, but the disgusting nature of some of Trump's supporters when it comes to their principles and what they support. because Well, they don't have any. Yeah, because when we had Obama, we had, I, I called them the Obama zombies, and I don't know what other people called them, but you had those people who were anything that Obama did, it was good. In All fact, you still see memes out there that he was the only president that hasn't had a, had a that's never had a scandal. Yeah, there's still the Obama <laughs> zombies out there. Like what? And so what drives me nuts is while Obama was the president, the Republicans, the conservatives were all over the hypocritical nature of his supporters at all times and how they would go for anything. Obama supporters went from protesting war while George Bush was president to not mentioning war whatsoever while Obama was bombing seven different countries you know right there was no principles behind that and i see that happening again with the trump supporters and it's a really sad it's a really sad thing to not be able to figure out what a conservative is what they believe in because if your principles are that you have to follow whoever the republican leader is blindly then you have some really terrible disgusting principles and you're not doing anything to further our ide- the American ideology whatsoever right? at all. You're trying to fight Marxism with fascism at that point in time. And it, it's not really, I know those are some really strong terms out there, but let's just read through some of these things. Yeah. So here's a, first off, we'll go with the, well, I got this first one. Uh, Gamash. Gamash. <laughs> went after the best president possibly ever, high treason, Hang on the White House lawn. Jesus. That right there. That's from a Republican, a Constitution America-loving Republican. Right there. The idea that since you went against the president, you should be charged with treason 
and be hung on the White House lawn. No wonder feudalism lasted so long. Yeah. It's apparently the, uh, just the default nature of humans to, to want this at, at all times. But the, these are principled conservative, conservatives here. This is, these are the people who hold the high moral values that our country should try to hold that someday. That person is apparently against Marxism. Yeah. But they have no problem with fascism. Yeah. So you have to think about that principle. So you went, you went against the president. That's treason. Hang on the White House lawn. What about going against Obama? Well, don't wonder if he said anything yeah. about what, Obama. I what, guarantee he did. What about going against the next president who's a Democrat? I mean, you just said that it's treasonous to go against the president and that you should be hung on the White House lawn. Or is it only the best president? It's whoever you think the best president is, Right. apparently. That's the problem. It's just the same subjective principles that we make fun of communists and socialists for having all the time, the completely subjective nature of their beliefs. Republicans seem to have the same thing. And let me tell you, if you're listening and you don't seem to get this, it's probably you. <laughs> so probably. You should probably. maybe look in the mirror. They're just a bunch of never Trumpers. <laughs> That's all it is. Orange man, bad people. That's all they are. Right. So great comeback. Um, let's see. He left. We have good. We don't need no traitor. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> it's a traitor. A traitor to what? Right. Donald Trump. What? What is the Republican ideology? Love Trump. Is that it? Right. Is that your Republican ideology? Um. Let's see. I don't believe he's a Republican. He's a Democrat to begin with. What? And we'll we'll talk about that one here in a minute. But uh, another one. Why don't you have the balls to say you're a Democrat? There's no such animal as an independent. That's just another form of voting Democratic without calling yourself one. So that Since person's when? saying, if you, basically what they're saying is, if you are not a Republican, then you are a Democrat. That's what they're saying. It's this whole, if you're not with me, yep. you're against me. You're with us or against us. That's it. That's the only options you have, with us or against us. Um, he's leaving because of his track record, apparently also, is what, what someone else posted. <laughs> the, uh, his near-perfect track record. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about that real quick because I wanted to look up, you know, we do these constitutional scorecards. I remember hearing about people's constitutional scorecards when the Tea Party movement was happening, uh, when, all, when all of these big movements in the midterm elections to get uh, the best congress and congressmen, the best senators in place, we hear about looking at these websites, constitutional scorecards. And at some point, at one point in time, when you were listening to Sean Hannity or Glenn Beck or Mark Levin or Rush Limbaugh, these constitutional scorecards were really important. So I wanted to look at Justin Amash's because uh, according to Republicans, one, he's no Republican. He's obviously a Democrat. That's the first thing. Um, according to President Trump, it's a good thing that he won't be in Congress anymore. So this is a good thing for America. Um, and that he's obviously a traitor. So, and he's leaving because of his terrible track record. Um, so Freedom Works, which is uh, about the most used congressional scorecard. This is uh, people voting in accordance with the Constitution. Justin Amash is in a tie for first place at 100%. Freedom Works. Really big foundation that I'm sure Trump supporters won't like anymore. Uh, has Justin Amash at a 100% history voting with the Constitution. Um, the Freedom Index is another, another constitutional scorecard. We have number one, Thomas Massey. Number two, Rand Paul. Number three, Justin Amash. Isn't it weird? I feel like, Charlie, you can tell me, but... Um, do you feel like Thomas Massey, Rand Paul, and Justin Amash are the favorites among conservatives and Republicans? Uh, no. No? No. I feel like they would be because they're ranked the highest on their constitutional scorecards. They, they should be. Yeah. But they get a lot of bad, bad rep from, you know, if they go against the president, if they go against our benevolent great leader, all hail Donald Trump. Weird. Same thing again, the John Birch Society, another another big website for that. They also have Justin Amash at number three in all of Congress, all of among all legislators at 94%. So 
So uh, now I put another post underneath this. Uh, great. So this is about him leaving. Great decision. Now we can get a real conservative Republican. So then we have the conservative review who also has, let's see, Justin Amash is at 92%. He is number six among all legislators from the conservative review. So just some of these. I just want to compare that to some Democrats that we have uh, and what their constitutional scorecards are. Uh, Let me find, uh, let me find who's, who's in the house of representatives that would be pretty recognizable. On the Democrat side. AOC. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Omar. Let's go down to M. It's probably under Ocasio-Cortez, I bet. Ocasio-Cortez. You want to know what her constitutional score is? It's, it should be really close to Justin Amash's since he's obviously a Democrat. It's 12. 12. 12. 12 100 versus 12. Wow. You are are you on Freedom Works right I'm now? I'm on Freedom Works. Yeah. Yeah. They score everyone. Yeah. There's a lot of Democrats in here that are zero. Yeah. Murphy from Florida, Democrat, zero on the Constitution. Uh Napolitano, a Democrat from California, zero on the Constitution. Meadows, Republican from North Carolina, 100%. And they have all the ones that are really good on the Constitution at 100% as a star. And all of them are Republicans. All of your Democrats, 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 0, 6, 0, 0, 6, 6, 0, 0, 0, 6, 6, 0. So, comparatively, oh, there's a couple of Democrats that have a 9. Oh, okay. Wow. But comparatively to Justin Amash's score of 100% on his voting record when it comes to the Constitution, apparently he's a Democrat somehow. 100 means zero. Yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's, uh, it's infuriating because I thought this whole time, I thought this was America, first off, and I thought that we were supposed to care about our legislators voting in accordance with the Constitution. That's their job. Yeah. That's what they swear an oath to. And that they would uphold and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I thought that the executive branch was to be kept in check and to be an equal branch of government in accordance with the beliefs of the Founding Fathers and the Constitution, that even if you are a fan of a certain executive branch, that you still have to call them out when they go against the Constitution. And calling them out does not mean that you're, I mean, apparently means un-American now, I I guess. Unless a Democrat was in office, then you'd be full-born eagle American. Yeah, yeah, straight up riding on an eagle with with an AR-15 on your back, for sure. So, But probably getting stopped by the cops. More than likely. To make sure that your AR-15... Is you know legal for you? To license carry. and everything. Yeah, have to. Yeah, of course. You can't go against cops. Either. You don't have one of those, do you? Hmm, no, not anymore. I used to. Yeah. Yeah. I, will, I. It sucks that thing got stolen, man. I know. It really sucks. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, but um, I think we get the basic idea here. But the problem I'm seeing is that Republicans seem to not care about the Constitution anymore. They seem to care more about your allegiance to the party and your allegiance to Donald Trump than about the Constitution, the Founding Fathers' ideology that created created America, which, by the way, I got to tell some of you Republicans, if Thomas Jefferson was here today, he would slap you straight in the face, Mm -hmm. right in the face. With both hands. Yeah, with both hands at the same time. And he would yell at you in cursive. Because this this is absolutely not what the Founding Fathers had in mind. This is absolutely, completely against the ideology. And you're out there celebrating the 4th of July and posting your American flags, talking about freedom. And your idea of freedom is making sure that you're allegiant to whoever the president is. And if you're not, then you should be hung on the White House lawn. Yeah. You don't understand it. 
No. You know, George Washington did an entire speech on allegiance to party, pretty yeah. much, in his farewell address, which Justin Amash used in his op-ed. Yep. But, of course, no one pays attention to that. Well, no and, one read the op-ed, I guarantee you. Right. He didn't sit there and espouse the Republican Party the whole time anyway. He just talked about how our allegiance to parties was really dangerous. Right. That's that's all he talked about. Not even just allegiance to Republican Party. No, he, allegiance to parties he, he in general. He didn't even talk poorly about the GOP in it. He just said that the that he wanted to be an independent because allegiance to party is really dangerous. He, he did talk about how if you don't, let's say, toe the party line, then you lose out on yeah. commission seats and things like that. Which... Did, did you see that video from uh, that that Rand Paul posted not too long ago from him speaking at a oh, what was it was it a heritage thing some kind of conservative uh, no it was a religious freedom okay. uh, convention something like that so he was there yes talking about how a someone high up in Republican leadership probably Mitch McConnell more than likely he <laughs> just said repeatedly someone that a high up Republican leadership told him that they could not put any measure to defund Planned Parenthood in the budget. And the reasoning was because it might pass. That was why. That came from the Republican leadership. Yes. But if you talk poorly about the Republican leadership or say that they need to be kept in check, good Lord, I said they needed to be kept in check on our page. And you thought I would have been posting, you know, ways to punch your baby in the face or something like that. <laughs> like you, you thought I would have been doing that, but no, I just said the Republican leadership thought, needs to be kept in check. Thought you would have posted saying, Hey, here's a link to fund Planned Parenthood. Yeah, no. <laughs> Donate. This is Rand Paul saying, I put a measure to defund Planned Parenthood in the budget and the Republican leadership made me take it out because they said it might actually pass. So there's your Republican leadership right there. There's your conservatives that care about babies. Yeah. Yeah, but don't go against the Republican Party. Oh, right. that means you're a Democrat. Um, the one thing that I wish would happen is like I wish, and I understand that Rand Paul's kind of playing the game, and we need him in there. I just wish he would oust him. Just say who it was. Yeah, I do too. And like just vote those freaking guys out. Yep. I The thing with Rand Paul that I, I hope a lot of libertarians have came around to is that He's seen that the whole keep your friends close and your enemies closer thing, that that's a real thing. That That's what I think anyway. Which more than likely he stopped Trump from bombing Iran. More than likely. Yes. Yeah. Because he's close with the president. Yeah. So. That was also, thank, didn't that, Nick Frieda said that at yes. the Young Americans yeah. Liberty Conference? Yeah. yeah. So thank God we're not in war with Iran right now. Now, are we probably going to be? More than likely. But yeah. at least right now, it, the, the, the attack was thwarted. And, yeah, and that was done by Rand Paul, I believe. So a lot of these people, libertarians in general, that have an issue seeing Rand Paul playing golf with President Trump, things like that. Like, I love it. I mean, at least you have someone who is mostly libertarian that is actually right there with the person making the big decisions in the country. That's like the closest anyone has been in a really long time. And obviously, Ron Paul big influence on our lives that's the whole reason that i'm even here doing this right now just the old the old story of stumbling on some ron paul videos on youtube like everyone's got that story mm -hmm. uh but he never he ran for president several times he he didn't get elected um he didn't exactly get a lot of legislation passed either he voted no on more things than anyone ever in history but he didn't exactly get a lot of things passed. That's no knock on Ron Paul. But what I do think we see is Ron Paul saw that from his dad throughout the course of his life, saw that he ran for president, uh, got shut out all the time, uh, saw that he, he didn't have many friends in Congress, so he wasn't able to get very many things passed. Uh, and while he was a great person to carry the torch and to you know get these I the ideology out there, I think Ron Paul is seeing, well, you know, maybe I believe the exact same things that dad does, but maybe I need to try a little bit different tactics to, to actually get some of these things changed. So that's my hope on, uh, on Rand anyway, mm -hmm. but anyway, Republicans, <laughs> <laughs> they don't oh, exist. Man. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, let me see. 
I was going to look at George Washington's farewell address a little bit. We're going to talk about allegiance to party. Yes. Just see how that is. Because, Charlie, are you a member of a political party? I can't, I mean, technically. Te- technically, I'm a member of the Republican Party. Yeah. Still. Um, I'm actually now a, I'm a dues-paying member of the Libertarian Party. Man, that's, that's nice. I guess so. I haven't figured out how the heck you can even vote Libertarian in Tennessee, though. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, it's like impossible. They keep moving the they keep moving the uh, the what you, the finish line. Yeah, you know, I think it was like ten thousand signatures, and now it's like forty thousand, and pretty soon it'll be like one hundred twenty thousand. Yeah, it's like oh, all, you just... all done by your Republican and Democrat parties. By the way, they yeah. don't want any other competition in there. No comp. That's your free market political parties yeah. right there. Oh, you just need to get. You just need to get 50 million signatures and we'll let you be on the ballot. No yeah. problem. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it's only like 8 million people in Tennessee total. So uh, um, George Washington was talking about the nature of uh, basically our nature to go to separate to separate ourselves into political parties. And he said, this spirit, unfortunately, is inseparable from our nature. Having the truth in the strongest passions of the human mind, it exists under different shapes in all governments, more or less stifled, controlled, or repressed. But in the in those of the popular form, it is seen in its greatest rankness and is truly their worst enemy. Um, let's see. I was going to say he ends up. Let's see. He talks about how it ruins the public liberty uh, because people will try to get into power in each one of those factions. He calls them factions a lot, political parties. Uh, so he talks about how it's 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 not good for liberty. Um, he says, without looking forward to an extreme to extremity of this kind, the common and continual mischiefs of the spirit of party are sufficient to make it the interest and duty of a wise people to discourage and restrain it. Um, well, because what happens is, and you see this happening in, the, in political parties, the basic human nature is to be tribal. Yeah. And what happens is, is when you have more allegiance to a party than you do uh, liberty or a set of principles, uh, it almost becomes mob rule, right? And so you have this whole mantra of, if you're not with us, you're against us. Like, if you're not Republican, obviously you're on the other team. You're like, you're a Democrat or if you're not a conservative, you're a liberal if, or whatever. People want to paint you on one spectrum or the other to play this tribal game to say, well, we're right and you're wrong. Uh, I'm smart. You're stupid. You're dumb. I'm right. Whatever. <laughs> you're a loser. I'm a winner. Exactly. And I think that's honestly why Trump got elected, because Trump is the one who punched back, let's say. Right. He was the guy on stage that was not unwilling to to say the politically incorrect things to say, uh, I'm the champion of our team. Yeah. Follow me. Um, we'll hit the Democrats back. Right. And so, you know, I, I even see it with my family members that are hundred percent Trump and it's just like he can do no wrong. And if you look at, if you talk to Republicans nowadays who are Trump supporters and you, ask them about the spending or like, you know, when, when Obama was, was president deficits were a big buzzword yeah. among Republicans <clears throat> and oh. they were, and they were Obama's fault. Right. Oh, the deficits. Yeah. And now Trump is running the highest deficits per quarter uh, that we've ever had ever yeah. half a trillion dollar deficits. And the Republicans no hide, no hair of the lady. No, they just, uh, yeah. They don't really seem to care. No. It's, it's Trump. He's got a plan. Don't worry about it. Right. Debt doesn't matter. And so you see that just as George Washington talked about, that allegiance to party over uh, what your maybe what your true belief should be, because I don't know, I like it's hard to explain. It's hard to even f- comprehend for me because I don't get it. Yeah. I don't understand this mob rule mentality of, well, it's my team or no one else's. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm a. We're obviously Dr. Paul supporters, whichever one they might be. But if if one of them came out in support of things that were unconstitutional or that took liberties away from people, I I wouldn't support them anymore. I called Rand Paul out yeah. one time. I can't I, remember exactly what it was about, but I remember specifically saying on a post on Facebook, you know, yeah, I'm a keyboard warrior. 
I remember specifically calling Rand Paul out, even though he's probably still my favorite favorite person in government right now, the most principled one, but I think he made a mistake on something, and I would have to go back and look it up because it's like two or three years ago. But I am not against calling my own people out that I agree with the most and holding them accountable for the views that they have. And there's nothing wrong with having wrong views, by the way, because I've had many of them in my life and I've adjusted. Yeah. But when somebody calls you out, that's what you have to do. It's, it's not about thinking that Trump's a bad person or anything like that. Maybe he is more than likely. He's not a good person (laughs) based on his track record. Maybe he is now, but criticism is important because when you throw your ideas out to the world and and they get thrown back at you, you have to look at them and reconsider. Again, there's nothing wrong with being wrong sometimes. I'm wrong all of the time. But what you have to do is reevaluate your position and realize, okay, if I take into consideration the different views, the different facts, the different stats, am I actually right? If I take apart my argument, am I actually right? And that's what you have to, to break it down to. And sometimes you have to adjust. And that's all we're really saying is Trump or the Republican Party or anybody that calls himself a Republican, you have to look at what you're actually advocating for and reevaluate your position, where you stand, and is it actually correct? Does it advance liberty or does it hurt liberty? And a lot of what the Republican Party is doing is hurting liberty. I think what a lot of them think they're doing is supporting American ideology and the Constitution and all of these great things that we all talk about. And I think they see Trump as the person who is going to save us from from socialism or who's going to save us from tyranny. But I think what they don't realize they're doing is this propensity to, uh, this this tendency to agree with Trump on anything he does or to defend him on anything he does or to hold, you know, no criticism of him whatsoever. Those things actually go against the actual ideology that you're trying to support, that you're trying, you're saying you're trying to save. You don't fight tyranny with tyranny. You don't, not at all. (laughs) It doesn't work. You don't say those people are tyrannical and I'm trying to fight them. And if you go against me, I'm going to hang you on the white house lawn. Like, that's not fighting tyranny. That's just you're an, ushering yeah, it in. That's just a new tyrant. That's all right. it is. Right. Um, so they're going against all these ideas, and what kills me is it it kills the uh, your ability to talk about those principles later on. It it kills all of your credibility because now when a when a new when a Democratic president gets elected, they're going to be okay. First off. You can't attack the Democratic president on their character whatsoever because, good God, look at all the things that Donald Trump has done that everyone's okay with right. in his past. I mean, that I can say this with 100% certainty that if Barack Obama had done 1% of the things that Donald that we know for a fact Donald Trump has done, the conservatives would have never shut up, shut up about it. They would have talked about how Christians can't support Barack Obama because, look, he paid off a porn star you know you if you're if you're a christian you you wouldn't be able to vote for obama because he did this kind of like there's no credibility anymore you they can, made excuses for you, trump. you made excuses for trump you can no longer attack any candidate on their character whatsoever so there's step one and now you're going to come in when there's a democratic president whether it's in two or four years six years whenever it's going to be um you're not going to be able to talk about the constitution anymore you're not going to be able to talk about deficits anymore because you don't care about them right now. Just like how Obama supporters didn't care about whatever the deficits while he was in office, and I don't I can't listen to a lecture from an from an Obama supporter about how we should stop running deficits. No one you're not going to be able to talk about those things anymore. You can't talk about the constitution, you can't talk about deficits because you don't care about the constitution or deficits right now. You care about making sure no one talks bad about Donald Trump. That's it. That's all you care about, and making sure that he gets reelected, making sure that he stays in power. And for what? What is the belief system? What's the ideology? No. What is the ideology of the Republican Party? A conservative Republican, what do they believe in? Is it the Constitution? If it's the Constitution, 
then why are you happy that someone who has a 100% voting record on the Constitution may no longer be in Congress? Why would that be a good thing for America if you believe in the Constitution? He's just a rhino. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. He, he's actually <laughs> literally a rhino because right. he was a Republican in name only. That's right. the only, he's like maybe one of the only rhinos out there, but it, that's the thing. Like you obviously, you don't care about the Constitution above all else. You don't. You care about Donald Trump about above all else. Right. That's it. So I, they've lost all credibility with me. Um, I'm very disappointed. Very disappointed because I thought while Obama was in office that this whole Tea Party movement, this move back towards conservative, you know, fiscal responsibility, the Republicans they were that they were going to be the party of principle, that they were going to show that they had the high moral ground when it came to our founding documents and the founding fathers, which some people don't even care about those anymore, but those that is the belief system that this country was founded on, and that's why it's so great and uh, why it's a place that people will risk dying to get into. But we don't care about those anymore, apparently. Mm-hmm. And that's disappointing, very disappointing. It it does It makes me a little sad, you know. I still... You know, we talked about Young Americans for Liberty last week, and so there's still hope. Yeah. Like, I have hope, but the pessimist, uh, the pessimism, yeah, yeah. The opposite, of opti- the opposite of optimism. Yeah. Pessimism. Yeah. Yeah. And the cynicism that I feel, it's pretty strong sometimes when I see, I guess you would call the loud crowd of the, you know, always Trumpers or Trumpettes or whatever we want to call them. I call them MAGA zombies now. MAGA zombies. Yeah. Like it gets a little disappointing. Um, But I think that if we keep pressing forward on these ideas and we keep getting Liberty minded people in office like Justin Amash, like Rand Paul, and we build as Cliff talked about a bench, right? Where we have 50 of these guys or gals in office there's power in numbers. Yeah. And so then it's no longer, um, you know, one or five or six people. It will it would be a a giant majority or, or at least a, a, a giant minority that's very – it's a lot more difficult to take down, if yeah. you will. So we just got to keep fighting the good fight. Grassroots. The, I trained in the grassroots. <laughs> the Democrats have people like AOC out there in Congress, you know, um, and she's obviously being really loud and making all of her points. Um, it's important that the Republicans also have that person that on, on that side. And one of the sad things is like, this is one of those guys. This mm-hmm. is, this is one of the few, if, if, if AOC is your straightforward socialist pushing the far leftist agenda all the time, you need a straight up liberty loving Republican out there and they're totally fine with trading in an actual liberty loving Republican for someone who is just a Trump loving Republican. Right. And, uh, that's not good. It's not. No. Just like it's not good that Nike is banning the use of the Betsy Ross flag. Oh Lord. (laughs) What's up with that? Here we go. It's crazy. I, you wrote a great article about this. Uh, you kind of went through some history of slavery which is yeah. good. It's a delicate topic, but I think you did it really well. Um, and if you guys don't know what the Betsy Ross flag is, it is the one of the original flags. It's a uh, has a thirteen star it has a thirteen stripes as well as thirteen stars in a, in a circle representing the original thirteen colony, colonies of the United States of America, the thirteen colony, colonies that fought the British in the Revolutionary War. Uh, and you made a great comparison to the movie The Patriot, which we love. Great movie. Mel Gibson. And in the final battle, the flag that his son had finished sewing, he's the one that triumphantly carried it and led the charge. Yeah. And that's how I see myself when we're doing these podcasts, when we're keyboard warrioring online, <laughs> just waving that flag back and forth. Yeah. You know? The specific Betsy Ross one. Yes, that yeah. one. Yes. Um, I actually had that one as my background on my computer. When we first started doing the Good Morning Liberty videos, I actually had that as my background for the videos was the Betsy Ross flag. 
So the idea here is that uh, Nike put out these shoes. On the back of the shoes was a Betsy Ross flag, and it was meant to commemorate the 4th of July, just for a little bit, you know, America's birthday. I don't even think they put them out, did they? No, no, they did not release them. They were supposed to. He stopped them before they did it. So um, they put out, they uh, they had this design for the shoes, and Colin Kaepernick um, went out there and said that that flag represented, you know, this was racist, it represented slavery, uh, and that, you know, this represented the time and when the country had slavery and that we should not be putting these on shoes. Um, I do, I do want to say yeah. that Nike's a private company and they can, they can do whatever they want. Absolutely. Right. If they had this campaign launched and they were like, we're going to release these commem- commemorative shoes with the Betsy Ross flag for the 4th of July. And then they decided, ah, we don't want to do it. They can do that. You know, that's fine. Totally fine. But the reasoning behind it is just asinine. Yeah, so th- the idea that we had slaves at that time when that flag was was created, okay, that's true. The, you know what else is true? So did everyone else, like almost every single other country. Every other developed nation? Yes. <laughs> yes, every other developed nation had slaves at yes. that point in time. Yeah. So the, the hypocritical nature of this is where I, like, I always, I hate it when people aren't, I hate it when there's not an objective principle being applied when consistency is lost yes because if you're going the call for some type of ban for the betsy ross flag which is that's not the wordage that they're using but basically they're going to take that flag off of anything that they have because it represented slavery that's effectively a nike ban on that flag so if you're going to have a ban on that flag then you also need to have a ban on the flag of every other nation that had slaves at that point in time, that for some reason America is just looked at as the nation that had a bunch of slaves, uh, and that every other country, I guess, was was uh, not like that at all. But actually, we've had uh, we have a history of slavery going back all the way eleven thousand years, probably longer than that. Yeah, that's just recorded history, recorded human history. There has been slavery throughout that throughout that entire time. Um, Honestly, sometimes as a kid, I felt like a slave. <laughs> You know, my parents made me do things against my will. Yeah, just child labor. Yeah, I had so, to mow the lawn and yeah. make my bed and do house chores and all this stuff with my, no pay. I grew up on a farm. I mean, that, yeah, this is a little bit, you know, there for a little bit. I had to get up real early, still dark, load load trucks with hogs. I guess I had to earn my keep, though, because yeah. my mom and grandmother were giving me a roof and some food. True, true. Know, which is what they gave slaves, by the way. <laughs> I don't so, think it's quite the same thing. Definitely not the same. No, no. N- not quite the same. But the idea, the the hypocritical nature of this it, is what drives me nuts because all of the other major countries had slaves also. You know, and if you're going to look at the Betsy Ross flag, that old classic, you know, first American flag from uh, I think it was 1777 is actually when when that one was released. So a little bit of problem there with the Patriot, by the way. Right. Because everything I read said that that flag was uh, 1777. But uh, maybe maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Um, if you're going to have a ban on that flag, well, also, the uh, what's the British flag called? Something Jack? Union Jack? That's what they call that? Yeah, I think so. So that flag, the the current design for that flag was made in 1801, which also... British had slaves at that point in time. Mm-hmm. So why is it we can look at America's Betsy Ross flag and say, well, that's just a representation of a country that had slaves, but then we can see the British Union Jack flag all over things and not think that, you know? I think that's just a little bit of, uh, that's a little bit hypocritical. When they had slaves at the exact same time. Yeah. Now, Nate, who abolish slavery first. So this is a pretty tough one to research because there all there are dates all over the place on this. Um, one of the common things I've seen back and forth is that it was the British because the British abolished the slave trade in 1807. Now our Emancipation Pro- Proclamation um, was in 1863, and then the 13th Amendment was in 1865. So the British abolished the slave trade in 1807. The problem is abolishing the slave trade is not the same as abolishing slavery. It's, right. It's not the same thing at all. It's as if I put this in the article too, like, you know, 
I've got this, and this is a crude example. I've got a cat. Well, tomorrow the government uh, bans the buying, selling, and trading of cats. Do I still have a cat? Yes. They, right. they did not outlaw people having those. Uh, they just outlawed these sell- the selling. So saying that the British abolished the slave trade in 1807 is actually not a good date to use because they didn't do anything about the people who still had slaves and the current slaves that were out there. Um, they did, in fact, abolish slavery in 1833. Most British colonies, um, I think they freed six or 700 slaves at that point in time, 700,000, sorry, slaves at that point in time. But, but the very first sovereign state, remember state is really just another name for nation. nation. The very first sovereign state to abolish slavery was Vermont in 1777. Hmm. That was the first official ban by a sovereign nation government. on slavery, by a government on slavery. Wow. Yeah. That's very interesting. It's weird. Just one year after the Declaration of Independence, an American state became the first this place to abolish slavery. Just so happens to be the same year that the Betsy Ross flag came <laughs> That's out. pretty crazy. Wow. Man. So maybe that flag doesn't represent slavery. Maybe that flag represents the first time a government banned slavery. Yes. Hmm. Well, maybe we should just have one star and one stripe. Just to represent <laughs> just Vermont. Vermont. That's yeah. it. Yeah. We can put Vermont's flag on shoes. Kind of an awkward looking <laughs> flag. Yeah. Uh, would it just be like a strip? Like just like one grommet? I, <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah. You guys can't see my hands, but right. I'm just doing what the, what the one single strip with the star at the exactly. end would look like flopping around in the wind. Yeah. So I don't it'd know. Be like try a, that. Um, it'd be like a long <laughs> cloth bumper sticker. Yeah. You know, that, that. like that thickness. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I could be a flag still. <laughs> sure. Maybe we'll taper it at the end to come to a point. Yeah, I feel like we're just trying to, I mean, like, that's like the thing that was on my go-kart antenna, I feel like, is what you're talking yeah, about now. Yeah, One of those flags. Right. Yeah. Or we can make it look like a golf flag or something, you know. Okay. Well, we'll get on that design. We'll let everyone know. <laughs> uh, we'll talk to Nike. I'll call yeah. Nike tomorrow. We'll see if we can get that scheduled. Get, to put get on them the on the horn. Their, yeah. Back of their snakers. Everyone needs to subscribe to this podcast. Yes. If you're listening on the website still, thank you for staying on the website for that long. But also, there's a subscribe button. That way, you can see each new episode that we release. Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, um, Podcast Stitcher. Addict, um, all like all of the apps. Yes, it's on there. Overcast, all, all of them. I don't know what that is. Yeah, but I guess it's on there. I read about it once. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, everyone needs to subscribe or go to GoodMorningLiberty.us. Check out our articles or go to BernieLies.com if you want to remember that one. That's a little bit easier. You know, like us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram. Um, still offering that award to the 10th follower on Twitter. So yeah. if anyone wants to jump in, <laughs> go ahead. We don't use our Twitter, so that's it's just going to be a running joke. Yes. But you can go on there and follow our automated post from our podcast hosting the other thing you can do before we get out of here is leave us a rating and review on itunes any other actually any podcast app that you do listen to um that's helpful and share the show with a friend that's pretty important yeah share it with somebody that you think needs to hear it share it with somebody else you think doesn't want to hear it but they still need to but they need to yeah if you guys do that we'll be back here to do it again tomorrow until then have a good day and a good morning liberty